Okay, truth number 18. Failure is not defeat in your battle with sexual sin. In an earlier talk, I said, quote, the Lord purposely allows sin to bring with it a host of painful consequences so that we'll come to hate it. I want to talk about the way the Lord uses our failures to accomplish the greatest good for our lives. But I'm going to set the stage for this talk with a biblical story that has nothing to do with sexual sin. It's the story of Hannah found in 1 Samuel chapters 1 and 2. A man named Elkanah had two wives. His favorite wife, Hannah, couldn't have children, and his other wife, Peninnah, was jealous of Hannah and therefore was cruel to her. 1 Samuel 1 says that Peninnah, quote, provoked her severely to make her miserable because the Lord had closed her womb. So it was year by year when she went up to the house of the Lord that she provoked her. Therefore, she wept and did not eat. Being a barren woman in the Jewish culture of that day was a great disgrace. The common belief was that such a woman had God's curse on her. How much deeper was the grief when someone was rubbing it in her face at every opportunity? It went on to say that, quote, she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. Hannah felt like a failure in life. And you know what? It was the Lord who closed her womb and put her in the position to feel like a failure. Why would he do that to someone he loved? Listen, God takes no enjoyment in bringing sorrow to his people, but he's not afraid to do it if it'll accomplish a higher good for them. In this case, he wanted to bring her to the place of such desperation that she'd be willing to dedicate her son to the Lord's work if only he would open her womb. And that's exactly what happened. So what was the higher good that came out of all her suffering? Her son Samuel became one of the greatest prophets in biblical history. For many years, he traveled around the country exhorting the Jewish people to stay faithful to the Lord. In his old age, he discipled a young man named David into the ways of God. And before it was over, he wrote a good portion of two important books of the Bible, all of that came about because this young woman was allowed to experience emotional anguish for a few years. Even though Hannah's struggles had nothing to do with sexual sin, I can really relate to her story. I'm mostly referring to the period in my life when I was finally seeking the Lord with some degree of earnestness and sincerity. I was spending time with Him every day and doing my best to live a life pleasing to Him. With all my heart, I wanted to be totally free from every trace of sexual sin, but I was still struggling with the temptation to give in to pornography. There were times when I won the battle and there were times I didn't. I couldn't understand why I was still experiencing these failures. I had heard plenty of stories of alcoholics and drug addicts who were set free from their addictions in an instant. It was only later that I came to realize that there's a big difference between an acquired habit like alcoholism or drug abuse and sexual addiction, which is the perversion and intensification of a very powerful human drive. So at the time, I didn't understand how much the Lord had to untwist the perverted thought patterns I had developed over years of sin. This is a process that simply takes time, and to think that it's just going to instantaneously vanish isn't any more realistic than it would be for a baseball manager to promise his team they're going to go undefeated for 162 games. Occasional failures are part of that process of coming into real and lasting freedom. But of course, I didn't understand any of this at the time. All I knew was that every failure was extremely painful. The anguish of heart I was going through wasn't much different from what Hannah experienced. And also, unbeknownst to me at the time, that anguish was creating within me a great earnestness to seek the Lord. It's sort of along the same lines of what James talked about when he said, quote, Tremendous power is made available through a good man's earnest prayer. 
Of course, the Lord wanted me to walk in victory over sexual sin, but that was only part of what he wanted to do for my life. He knew I needed victory in other areas of my life as well. Sexual sin was a big problem, but what about pride? What about my tendency towards self-sufficiency? What about my critical spirit? What about my lack of love and mercy? There was actually quite a list of serious spiritual faults still thriving within me. They all needed to be dealt with and eradicated. The truth is that I wasn't all that concerned about pride or my lack of love or any of my other faults. Those sins don't carry the stigma of immorality. So the Lord was utilizing my intense cries for deliverance to begin working in all the areas in my life that needed changing. There's another factor I should also mention regarding this period of struggle. In the same way the Lord used those sporadic failures to accomplish a higher good, the enemy also wants to use them for his evil purposes. Every fall opens the door for the enemy to come in like a flood with lies and accusations. You haven't changed at all. You're just as full of lust as ever. You'll never overcome sexual addiction. It's too powerful. Look at your track record. Defeat after defeat, nothing has changed. The other thing demons will do is bring dark thoughts of condemnation into the man's mind. God hates you for your sin. He's going to send you to hell. You don't belong in the family of God. How can you even go to church? You're nothing but a blemish on the body of Christ. Such accusations are meant to do one thing, to discourage you and get you to give up the fight. If you could only hear God's thoughts, you might be surprised at how vastly different God is from such hateful thoughts. His thinking would probably be more along these lines. I've taken note of the fact that you have really started battling with your sexual sin. I can't tell you how happy I am that you've begun spending time with me every morning. Listen, don't get discouraged. We're going to fight this battle together and we're going to win it. So if you're in that phase of walking with the Lord in a real way, but still suffering occasional lapses, don't despair. God is doing a mighty work inside you. He has a plan and he's unfolding it in your life. Just keep fighting. Whatever you do, just keep fighting.